What's up? Coach Dan Blewett here, and it is Christmas Eve. I'm on location at my parents' house, um, and I felt like it was a good time to do a video about how to break in a baseball glove slash how to break in a softball glove. So this is something I got asked every year as a baseball academy owner. Kids come in with their brand new baseball glove, their brand new softball glove, and they want to treat their new piece of leather right. So let's talk about some of the do's and don'ts and the best thing you can do to break your glove in right. So number one, this is gonna change. So I have here a Rawlings Heart of the Hide. This was a pitcher's model, it's 12 inches. The way you're gonna break this in and the way you're gonna mold it to your hand is gonna be highly dependent on the position that you play. So number one, if you are an infielder, and then, so we're, the, the structure of this video, this is gonna be baseball first and then I'll cover softball at the end. So if you're a baseball infielder, here's the things that you wanna do. So number one, We've got four fingers here, right? We want to close this glove for an infielder shallow. We want a shallow pocket that's going to be easy to grab a ball out of. So this glove can actually go in a couple different ways. The way I broke it in as a pitcher, it has a very deep pocket. So you see here the ball completely is gone when it's in there. And this is because I broke it in with two fingers in the pinky stall here. And I touched my fingers thumb to pinky, which makes the glove effectively deeper. As an infielder, you want to close the glove more across three fingers. So you can see one, two, three here, or even sometimes four where there's not as much of a pocket. It's a lot shallower. So if you are an infielder, this is what you want to do. You'll see all infielders, they have this shallow grab in their glove, and this is going to be dependent on how you break it in. So if you're a pitcher or say you're a third baseman, you might want to touch more of your thumb to your second finger like this, or even your thumb to your pinky finger. Now this is going to be really uncomfortable unless you start to put two pinkies in the finger in the in the the pinky stall, two fingers in the pinky stall. So with outfielders, and this is really important, if you got an outfield mitt, I don't have one here to picture. If you're an outfielder, you're going to put your hand in your glove like this. So instead of one in each stall, these two are going to stick together and both go in the pinky stall. This is going to go in the ring finger stall. This is going to go in the middle finger stall. And there will be nothing left in the index finger stall. So what that looks like is this. So you're going to see here, there's nothing in the index finger. Index fingers in the middle finger stall. And then these two together are in the pinky stall. And what this does is it changes how the glove closes. So now it's really easy for me to touch thumb to pinky. And this is the way that all outfielders close their gloves because when they're diving and they're running, it gives them a longer reach where they can scoop up that ball when they're running or diving. So if you're an outfielder, you're going to want to put two in the pinky stall and you're going to want to break it in touching thumb to pinky. If you're an infielder, you're going to want to put your fingers in the normal spot wherever you want them. You could have your pinky out or your index finger out or in, it's up to you. And then you're going to want to break it in across three fingers or even across four, it's whatever you're comfortable with. But you want to build that shallower pocket as an infielder, that deep bowl-like pocket as an outfielder. And then if you're a pitcher, this is going to be up to you. Obviously, for most youth pitchers, you're going to be playing multiple positions. So you might not want to break it in super duper like an infielder. You might want to have it somewhere in the middle. That's going to be up to you. I always think a multi-purpose glove is good, especially when your parents spending a lot of money on your kid. You know, this glove here was like $250. So you want it to last and you want it to be multi-purpose if possible. So just try to think about what you want. Now as a pitcher, if you have just, I'm a pitcher only, or I have a glove just for pitching, you're probably going to want to break it in deeper, whether you go two in the pinky like I did, or if you go one in each stall and break it in more in you know, a traditional way, that's up to you. So the next thing to cover is how you're actually going to break it in. And I'll come back to softball at the end. Um, how you want to actually break it in. So things you don't want to do. You don't want to use shaving cream. That's not great for the leather. Some shaving creams can be okay. You don't necessarily want to use Vaseline because that can break down leather over time. Um, but here's a couple things to think about. Number one, don't be afraid of oil because people think about it making their glove heavy, but it doesn't really because you're only going to put a couple grams of it on there. Even if you had a whole bottle of oil, if you're only putting five grams of oil, you're adding five grams of weight to your glove. So it's kind of a myth that it'll make your glove heavy, but some amount of oil isn't really gonna break it in so much as it's just gonna condition it over time and take care of it. So oiling your glove every couple weeks, or every month, that's always a good thing. It's gonna keep the leather um, moisturized and not crack as early. 
The other thing to think about um, is getting these wear points. And so let's explain what these are. Basically, the way you break in a glove is, number one, by pounding it and playing, catching it, playing catch with it. But number two is, this is a wear point right here. This is a wear point right here. So when you're breaking in a glove, you're going to pound it in the center, whether you have a mallet or you're just using a ball. Playing catch is still the best thing to do. You're going to shape your pocket and try to deepen it, especially when you get this thing brand new and it's stiff. You want to pound in the middle and deepen that pocket. Number two is you want to take your hands and you can take your hand out of the glove completely and really mash folding in this wear point here because we want this to get creases in it. When this gets creases in it, which is designed to, and when this gets creases in it, now your glove is going to be bending in the way that you want it to, the way it's designed to. You don't want creases in other strange places. You really just want to get these wear points pretty loose so now the glove can flex out once. So those are the main things to think about. What you do with the fingers is up to you, whether you curl them a bunch, whether you flare it out, that's personal preference. Um, but beware if you start to flare these fingers out too much, you might have balls that start to skip off. If you curl them in too much, they'll have a little bit of like a bowl effect, but they probably don't make that much difference. It's really just personal preference. Um, but those are the big things. So. Glove oil isn't really going to break your glove in that much faster. It will help a little bit, but really it's just going to be long-term conditioning. Um, focus hard on the wear points. So take the glove out of your hand and you can smash it over and over and over on these two wear points right here. Beat the pocket. A little bit of hot water splashed onto the pocket or any of these wear points will loosen them up. So that'll make it easier to do that. But definitely ask your parents um to heat up some water for you you don't want it boiling but it should be pretty hot so it kind of loosens up the leather but again be really careful don't do that without parental supervision and then those are the main things okay so with a softball glove you're going to want again to have a big enough pocket to fit a really big softball obviously like they're way bigger than a baseball i don't have one here with me um, so the the main principles of the baseball glove are going to apply you're still going to break in the wear points you're still going to pound the pocket to deepen this as much as you can and then you're going to want to grab it more close to thumb and pinky rather than breaking in like this. If you break it in like this, it's going to be way too shallow to fit a softball. It's not going to work very well. So you want to have that deeper bowl when you're breaking in a softball glove. And the big thing is a lot of young players, whether they're boys or girls, they'll have a tough time squeezing a really stiff, like high quality glove. So parents, you'll probably have to help out. Um, and you know, if you have an older brother, older sister, playing catch with someone who throws a lot harder than you is gonna be a really fast way to help break it in. Because if you only throw 50, 60 miles per hour, that's not a really big impact to help break these in. So you're gonna need some more of the mallet time and you're gonna to need to really spend some time just sitting around watching TV, taking your glove and folding these wear points to help it get a little bit easier for when you do finally get outside and you can start playing to catch a bunch. So those are the big key points in breaking in a glove. I don't recommend um, putting it in the oven or in the steamer. That's going to loosen up the leather permanently. And then the stiff, hard leather that you paid for is basically reduced to cheaper, softer leather. So if you're a younger player and you really don't have time to break in a really expensive, hard mitt, then just get a cheaper mitt that's got softer leather right off the bat, and that'll be good for you. Um, but if you're a player that you wanted a heart of the hide or an A2000, or one of those nice Maruchis or a nice Nakona, whatever it is, they're gonna take more time and it's just part of the process. So you can't really rush it. You just gotta have to take the time and just say, you know what, I'm gonna have this puppy for a while. So I'm really just gonna do it right. I'm not gonna steam it. I'm not gonna put it in the oven. I'm not gonna put it under my bed because you don't wanna make it a pancake. But we just wanna really break in those wear points, deepen the pocket, and, uh, and just try to shape it to our hand over time. And really at the end of the day, playing catch with it is going to be the best bang for your buck. All right. So hopefully this video about how to break in a baseball mitt, how to break in a softball mitt was helpful. I hope you have a happy holiday season and we'll see you here soon.